Welcome back to another episode of Getting Real at Hill Farms. Today we're going to show you, we're back here at uh, Hill Custom Lumber, and today we're going to show you how to take green lumber and turn it into dried lumber. Okay, Corey? Uh, so this right here, what we have, uh, this is a stack of poplar. Um, so this stuff is what you'd call green lumber. This just came off the sawmill. Um, it's not ready to be used inside your home yet. Uh, what you have to do to be able to use hardwood lumber, or any lumber for that matter, inside your home, you have to kiln dry it first. And the basic idea of kiln drying, you're removing the moisture. Um, if you would take this green lumber and put it in your house, the humidity in your house is lower than the humidity outside. So what would happen that would shrink? Uh, whether it be flooring, cabinetry, you'd get gaps in between the boards, uh, causes a lot of problems. Um, so we'll put it in the kiln and that'll drive out the moisture, make it ready uh, to use in the home. So as you can see here, the boards are sticker stacked. We call these little strip stickers and that allows airflow to go directly through and touch all sides of the boards and that makes them dry evenly. So we can take you over to the kiln, we'll open it up. We actually have a load of lumber coming out and we'll show you that process. So we're standing inside of one of our kilns here. Uh, we run three kilns in total. This is our biggest and our newest. Uh, this was built in fall of 2018. Um, all our kilns are Nile dehumidification kilns and the principle behind them, they are like a dehumidifier in your home. They actually draw the moisture out of the wood and separate that moisture and it drains out as water. So as you can see above us here, we have a fan baffle. This particular kiln runs six fans, and this baffle separates the air. So if you step in here, you'll see this is our lumber. These are walnut slabs, uh, two inch thick, heavy walnut slabs. And what happens, the air circulates down and around and through, and it drives it through this stack, through those stickers we saw earlier, uh, forcing the air over the surface of the wood. Uh, that's why we have everything baffled to push that air through here. And then this is our actual drying unit that pulls the moisture out and it just goes right along that drip line outside. Um, so we'll unbaffle this. Uh, this is a cart system, this particular kiln. Uh, we fab this all up here in house and we'll show you how that works. How we unload it uh, and we'll get it ready for the next load. So I guess to explain a little bit what you're doing here, this plastic falls down here because the air is driven on that side, comes down underneath, and is forced to come back through the pile of wood instead of coming just right. across the top. That's, that's exactly right. We're trying to channel that air exactly where we want it, which is through this stack of wood. It does us no good to go around the stack of wood. We want all the airflow straight through. So you're really directing where the current's yep. going, where the flow is going and everything. And then and in turn it drives it straight to this drying unit which has a fan in itself which circulates the air through pulling the moisture out of it. So there's a purpose for everything that's in yeah. here, there. why yeah. it's set up the way it is. And right now, this kiln right now is actually still, we shut this down this morning and it's still about 90 degrees in here. Um, we'll run this kiln at a temperature generally between 100 and 120 degrees. We can run it up to 150 degrees to sterilize it to kill any insects and to set the pitch in pine so it doesn't, you know, so the pine's not sappy when you bring it in your home. So how long does it take then to dry a load of wood, depending on, it just, it, on different factors? It depends on what type of wood it is and the thickness. Um, the thicker the wood, the longer it takes. Uh, this particular batch of walnut is two inches thick. Uh, this has been in here for three weeks. Um, we can dry pine and poplar in as little as a week. Um, oak takes four weeks. So it, it really depends on the type of wood, 
Um, some woods you can dry much faster than others. Some you have to dry very slow so you don't, you know, over dry them, you know, cause end checks and, and other defects and warping. So where did you get the idea to build this? Is this something that they got out of a book or you just kind um, of build it from uh, a lot of ideas put together? This is my third one, so the third time's a charm. Um, I've picked up stuff I've learned from my other two kilns and uh, Nile Systems, the, the company that manufactures these drying units, is really good to work with uh, for technical support. Uh, they've been in business a long time, so they're very well versed in these systems and what works and doesn't work. So I took ideas from a lot of different sources to make this, this is kind of a, a hybrid type system. This is actually what we're standing in right now is a 40 foot insulated shipping container. Um, and I adapted that. It's very well suited for this uh, because of the stainless steel interior and it's very tightly insulated. Um, a lot of this moisture that comes off of this wood, especially the oaks, is very acidic, very corrosive. So plain steel will just rust. Um, so everything in here is either aluminum, stainless steel. Uh, it's built to last. Um, so yeah, this is this is a hybrid of ideas. This track system was kind of my own idea. Um, you'll see that a little bit later how we have it set up with a winch to move in and out. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the information's out there. But like I said, this is my third third iteration on building a kiln, and I think I've fine tuned it now. This is. I wish they were all built this way, but you learn as you go. Well, how do you know when the bun's ready to come out of the oven? I have a, a moisture meter. Um, there's, there's different types of moisture meters. We use a Wagner pinless moisture meter. Um, so I can just come in here and take samples and show the moisture content on the wood. You know, I just check different areas throughout the pile and make sure it's all uniform. And uh, uh, typically between six and 8% moisture content. That's what we shoot for with hardwoods. That's the ideal moisture content for in your home. So this is scientific. You're not just looking at it saying, yep, looks like it's done. No, there's, there's no guesswork there's here. There's really no way to look at a piece of wood and tell how dry it is. There's just, you know, you can, you can kind of feel by weight and certain stuff, but um, yeah, you have to measure to be accurate. So you can give good consistency with the product that you're putting out. Exactly, there. exactly, which is critical, especially for our hardwood flooring operation. Uh, we can't afford to send out a bad batch of wood, you know, that's going to cup or twist or move on a customer. So, so we're very particular to make sure, you know, that it's it's all within the spec before it uh, leaves the kiln. Interesting. All right. Yep, we're good. So here we're all set up to pull this out now. Um, like I said, the, the kiln part is actually the easy part to build because there's there's plenty of examples on that. Sometimes the other auxiliary stuff is the challenge. Uh, like I mentioned before, we fab this all right here uh, from scratch. Um, we had to make our own track system. Uh, basically, it's kind of similar to a railroad track. And we set up this winch. This winch can be used to pull the load out and pull it back in. We have a pulley mounted uh, to the back wall there to, to pull the load back in. Um, so it's all set up, we pull it out.
so what we have here, these are actually 18 to 20 foot long walnut slabs. Um, we're actually custom drying these for a customer. This isn't my own wood. Uh, we do a lot of custom drying for people. Um, so we're about to unload these and uh, we'll prep it and we'll be loading up the next load. And uh, we basically keep these kilns running 24 seven, 365 days a year. So this, this wood here, uh, what would a person use wood like this for? Uh, these live edge slabs have become very popular in the last couple of years. Uh, they're used for a lot of different rustic style things, uh, whether it be bars, benches, desks, headboards for beds. I've seen them used in a lot of creative ways. Um, the, the live edge, a lot of times what people will do, they'll peel this bark off and leave the live edge of the, the tree there. Um, which just makes for a really unique piece of furniture. Yeah, interesting. Really nice looking wood. So I just want to point out, as, they, as we mentioned earlier, uh, this whole system is powered by a solar panel there at the end, charging a battery. So once again, being uh, harvesting the free electricity that the sun provides, and uh, you know, being a little bit more uh, eco-friendly. So uh, you got to pull this off, and uh, we'll show, we show the people exactly how uh, this comes off the uh, the, the rack. All right, the wood's out of the kiln now and it's nice and dry. So what's the next step after that, Corey? Uh, what we'll do from there, we'll sort through it. Uh, some is destined for flooring. Uh, other stuff is, is stuff we'll set aside for our retail business. Um, right here is a selection of our retail wood. Uh, we like to try to keep everything in stock that a customer can just come and pick out, you know, their own boards. Uh, and we try to keep a little bit of everything. We have some walnut, cherry, maple, um, right here just for instance. Um, this stuff's all kiln dried, ready to be used in your own projects. Um, so, like I said, we'll, we'll sort through it and, and determine the best use of the wood, uh, whether it be for flooring or, you know, uh, if it's too nice for flooring, it'll, it'll be sitting here uh, waiting for you to come buy it. Alrighty, well that's really interesting. So now, we know how to do it up to this point, so we're anxious to see what happens uh, once you have it ready to go and to, to, to be made into a project. So we'll stop back at another day when uh, you're making some flooring or some molding or some kind of paneling or something uh, that a customer has ordered and uh, we'll take a look and see how that process is done. So until then, remember, keep it real.